Something that you might not know about me is that I have always loved playing racing video games. We're talking OutRun, Gran Turismo, Mario Kart, RC Pro-Am, Gran Turismo 2, Hainong, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, Gran Turismo Sport, you name it, I love it. But I've always played with either this or this when I'd rather be playing with this. Well, thankfully, I just found the perfect excuse to make that happen. Today we're kicking off the Rockler Hobby Challenge where the basic idea is to take something that you love and build something to help you enjoy it even more. Now at the end of the video, I'll talk about it a little bit more, how you can enter, the prizes, all that stuff. But for now, let's start building this simulation rig. For this sim racing rig that I wanna build, I have two basic ideas. The first most obvious one is just make something that looks cool. The other idea would be to do something that's like discreet in a way. So maybe it looks like a different piece and it, it folds up in some way or something like that. So it doesn't just look like a sim racing rig just sitting there. The cool looking idea is gonna be bigger, ergonomically might be a little bit better. What's a cooler idea? Okay, so you probably already guessed by seeing the thumbnail for the video, but we decided to go with the cooler looking version. So our starting point was determining where all of the crucial bits would go. So that'd be the seat, the steering wheel, the pedals. And then once we had that figured out, I could start to kind of design around them. Ready? Do one of those things. Okay, all the pieces to start figuring out what we're gonna do. So I say we kind of open stuff up, see what we got, and then maybe kind of mock up some dimensions for the ergonomics, and then that way I can design around that. A little leather boot. That's snappy. Oh man, this seems fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about this. So if we have a panel here that, that attaches to, and then this panel needs to attach to the feet. I mean, it, God, this is gonna be hard. So we're gonna want them like up, kind of. Higher. Nine. Yeah, that's pretty good. If then we can move back from there, we'll be okay. And it's not like we're gonna take drives to uh, San Francisco, so we don't need to be that comfortable. So if you want, we can start there. I can start kind of like, just like roughly modeling things up. Let's start with that and then we'll refine. Okay. Good? Yeah. this good content? I don't understand what it looks like. Is um, it a chair? Is it a whole little, like a photo booth, little room? Google sim racing rig. This has a big footprint. You should just have it come from the ground, right? So yeah, get a just, basement under there yeah. and then just So this is now right, build, lift up our house. build a DIY basement. Yeah, do you like my sim racing rig? It only cost us $150,000. <laughs> this is insane. Do you think you'll drive, you'll try it? I'll try it once. I can see her trying it. I'm like a drunk driver. <laughs> I don't drink. So break, 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 break. Okay, so here's the design concept. At this point, we'd figured out where in space the steering wheel, pedals, and seat would live in relation to one another. So from there, I could start figuring out what kind of shape I could make that would hit all of those key dimensions and then hopefully just look cool beyond that. And the basic idea was to make a sort of central spine shape that's sort of flowy and organic and maybe very mildly race car inspired. And once I had that figured out, I would have to come up with a way to make a few sort of mounting blocks that would act as intermediaries between the spine and the things that we needed to mount to it. And here's the basic idea that I came up with. So from there, I could model everything in 3D and then present it to the group. What do you think, Dilo? You like it? Yeah, it's like a letter opener, but upside down. Have you laid that out on a sheet of plywood? No, I have not. That looks like the Skechers logo. It does. People always ask where I get my inspiration from, and I usually say the Skechers logo. You should Skechers. Start wearing Skechers. All right, let me figure this out. All right. More to come. Okay, so we've got our basic shape down. We know what we need to do, but now we need to find a way to take it from the computer and get it into reality on a sheet of plywood. So there's a couple different ways we could do that. And the most basic is gonna be just finding some kind of plot points within the model that we drew and then translating those onto a piece of plywood and essentially just kind of connecting the dots. So that's what I did first. And you can see here that we can get a pretty good shape 
a lot of this isn't super critical, really only a few little points are critical. The rest of it's just kind of a organic shape that we need to be reasonably close. That said, something that you could do, but it takes a very specialized machine, although it will do it more accurately, is use the CNC. So here we're flashing forward to me cutting out some small templates that I can use to create my big template. So really we only need to do this one time. We just need to get to the point where we've got our first shape cut out of plywood. And then once we do, we can use that as our template moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of and then we'll have to figure out some other stuff, but this is the first order of business, so let's get that done. Oh, my shoulder hurts. Are you ever afraid that you won't be able to like build your idea? Oh yeah. Like I have the least confidence that you could have in something I have in this. It makes perfect sense because if I were you, I'd be like, how the hell am I gonna do this? I mean, you're helping me to lose more confidence I, right well, now. Well, that's why I didn't want to ask. What are you not confident about? It's just so different, the, the ergonomics of it involved. You like, mean, the ergonomics of this are more complex than the ergonomics of a chair, and that's why people don't build chairs. Whereas a coffee table or a dresser or whatever just needs to look good and the dimensions don't really matter. Mm. It's funny because this seems like, I could probably do this. Like, I mean, it, it, I do, I agree with you. I think this is from like a building perspective, it's easier. The thing about something like this that comforts me and makes me not as nervous about it is that there's nothing riding on it. If I'm making a piece for a client or even if it's gonna go in my own home, it's like, I don't wanna screw it up. This. The video would be, honestly, if we totally failed on it, the video could end up being better. Right. Dolores, I like the way that you introduced this topic. Yeah, and then and then she's just, just like, the <laughs> she's just clicking away over there. <laughs> she wanted to make you nervous. While I was jigsawing this, I had a thought. Remind you of anything? A racetrack. <laughs> yeah. We get a nice chicane, huh? For the sim heads out there. All right, that's all. Unless you got anything else to say. That was it. You just wanted yeah. to show me that it was a... I just wanted to show you that. Now I got to route all this stuff. Well, oh, that's what you should have thought about before is to model it after a... I know. A, that would have been cool. What if we lie? Yeah. Well, it's not a lie if you believe it. And I do. <laughs> What's this part? That's the straightaway at... Uh, Monza. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. The Cirque de la Sarthe. Mm -hmm. Where they have the 24 hours of Le Mans, they have like the really long straight, but then they put in the like things where you- cones or whatever. Yeah, they put it where like basically to like break up yeah, the yeah. straightaway because it's too long and yeah. fast. And yeah. I think there are two of them. So that's what the bottom was modeled after. Yeah, you, yeah, you definitely wouldn't have been able to make an entire no, racetrack on it. I mean, you could, but it'd probably be a real simulation rig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like my body doesn't even fit in here. Any other thoughts? Let's All right. Well, if that's it, then. All right. I'm gonna get back to work. What are you doing? We're trying to film. No Jeez. Pictures. No pictures. No pictures, please. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the ham. She's a little she ham. She's a ham. She's Christmas even ham. dressed like a ham today. That <laughs> sweater. <laughs> So I've got the first two done. I need five total. I'm thinking these two just go on the outside. Then to save material on the inside, we kind of make it out of piecemeal where you don't need to see it. Structurally, I don't think that should be an issue as long as we stagger the joints. So when we were talking about this earlier, I was kind of imagining that because you have like some weird offcuts and we have like, we have a bunch of kind of yeah. small scraps. So like in my head, I was thinking what you would essentially do is like maybe take, you know, this piece, which is essentially useless for yeah. most applications. And you could just lay it, you know, wherever it makes sense, trace it out. And as long as you have that straight edge, attach it here. Mm -hmm. And then you just start building around yeah. three yeah. times. I'm not sure what would be faster or what's more efficient or. That's, know. that's the thing that always gets me. And we're, me and you are the worst at this. 
we sacrifice a lot of time to be efficient with material, right. which is good if you're a hobbyist in their garage, yeah, but when yeah. you're actually trying to get stuff done, I waste so much time. Even if we were, if we had a free lumber supply, I still would be like, I just feel bad. Like this is, I don't want to waste. I don't want to be wasteful. Right. Maybe this first layer, you try it like this, you get it out of these weird chunks mm -hmm. i could get all three or all six of these pieces probably just from this yeah well yeah this is like a really weird shaped unless i can find some square pieces there's these. yeah and there's yeah there's that there's that Okay, there's probably a pretty big question that a lot of you are asking right now, which is, where's the TV go? And while you could definitely mount a TV to the spine or on the wall, we're not. And that's because we're going to use a projector. More specifically, this Cinebeam 4K projector from LG, and there's two main reasons that we decided to go this way. First is image size and quality. By adjusting the distance from the wall, I can get a super vivid 4K ultra high definition image anywhere between about 60 and 140 inches. So having that ability to adjust screen size coupled with the ability to adjust my proximity to the wall, I'll be able to make the image fill up my entire field of view, which will be just really immersive. And speaking of that image, I'm telling you, video doesn't do it justice, but when you see it in real life at full scale, 140 inches of 4K is jaw dropping. I mean, here's our genuine first impression. But it looks really good though. Yeah, it does. Like it's very sharp and it's, it's not even we that were, dark in here and it looks good. Like, we were, you know, we're going like wild with it and we're not that much bigger than yeah, what it's, it's actually meant you, for. I'd be like, this is like 400 inches. And it looks great. Now I, I wanted to see what 140 looks like. Now I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert, but I researched it a bit and from what I gathered, part of what makes this projector's image different has to do with the four channel LED light source with wheelless technology. Basically, it makes the picture look brighter and you don't notice any rainbow effect. Honestly, this stuff's above my head. I can only tell you what my eyes see, but it looks great. And the second reason I would describe as lifestyle. So obviously, I intend to play games a decent amount on this thing. But honestly, at this age, it's not really a way of life for me anymore. So rather than investing money into a TV that's just going to sit there, I'd rather invest into something that's a little more versatile. And as you can see, this thing's pretty small and portable. So I can move it around or even take it outside for movie night or bring it to a friend's house. And with LG Web OS 4.5, we have access to all the major streaming services and conveniences that we've come to expect. So whether that's Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, or even mirroring our phones, we can watch whatever we want, wherever we want. It even has Google Assistant and Alexa. So basically everything that you want built right in. And lastly, it's rated at 30,000 hours of semi-permanent lamp life. So to put that in perspective, basically you could run this thing for eight hours a day, every day, and you wouldn't need to replace the light source for about 10 years. Plus, it'll keep the initial brightness longer. So that gives me confidence that I'm never going to need to spend money or time on changing a bulb. But all that said, there's still a ton of work to do before we can play anything on this guy. So with those concerns addressed, let's get back to the build. Does it look like a cool bike? Yeah, we, we could be new motorcycle builders. West Coast Choppers Yeah, this style. is West Coast Choppers now. Um, so obviously this spine portion of the build is put together. You know, up until this point, it's just been repetitive. It's been a lot of uh, cut out a shape, glue on a layer, template route it five times over and over. So that now we've got the spine. Still got to make the feet, but I'm ready to start like putting the things that matter on here where it's gonna actually start getting crucial. You know, right now it's just kind of an abstract shape. So at some point the seat was gonna go here. We're gonna put the pedals here. It's already fun. So I think I'm gonna just like stack up some blanks of plywood to be the proper thick nine. Is that what these are? <laughs> I haven't done those yet. <laughs> Shoot, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was gonna do kind of like a stealth bomber shape. That's for you. Nice. You know how much you like that B fifty two? No, B. Don't tell me. Which one? The one that we like looks like a like Batman would the, fly. The it. angular one or the. the it looks like a flying one. triangle. B. Yeah. 50, mm -hmm. 40, 20, 30, 70, I, 80. I hope I'm right. I think you're wrong. I feel like I've named everything already. B, yep. am I right so far? Yep. 
Arthur. What? B. Arthur. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what they named it. <laughs> the B. Arthur Bomber. B. <laughs> <Me> Two Bomber. <laughs> Told you I knew what it was called. <laughs> what were we? To, how did that come up? This doesn't look like it. Because you said you said you're. Oh, that's right. Yes, this thing's gonna look like the B. Two Bomber. <laughs> For you, because I know how much you like that one. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> right here is going to be the foot plate that, like, the pedals are going to go on, but then we're going to need, like, some kind of support because we're going to be stomping down left and right. So I was going to build some little wings that come out here. And for wings? that, yeah, and I was thinking of paying homage to another one of your favorite planes. Yeah, what's that? The Blackbird. That's the fastest. It was yeah. the fastest. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's... It's, I don't know if it's the fastest plane. Uh, well, do you know the actually, number? Actually, it might still, yeah, I definitely know the number. Is it a B? No. If you don't know, if you don't know it, it, yeah, if you don't know it, you'll know. never guess it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, I know it. And then anyway, so I'll put some wings coming out here for you, because I know you like nice. that. What about the part that the seat sits on? That's just going to be kind of a square. What is that? In fact, be it's right here. Here it is oversized. I'm going to have to cut her down. What's that going to be reminiscent this of? This reminds me of like an aircraft carrier. Oh. And I know your favorite aircraft carrier. My favorite? Yeah, is the... I'm not much of a boat man. SS. Should we start with that? Sure. Nimitz. Nimitz is a class of aircraft carrier. Well, and the best. All right, so as far as assembly... Should just all be like kind of screwed down to stuff, except for I'll do have to do pocket holes for these little wing guys that come out here. I'm thinking because well, they'll have a flat spot up here, so I think that I'll do a pocket. So you're gonna put the wings and the platform will be separate. There'll be like a platform that the whole pedal thing kind of. It, it'll actually be like two bars, and then to support the underside of those bars, there'll be those four little like wings that come out, and so those sit kind of like flush with this it would basically be like a piece like sticking out of right here. yeah yeah so i think all you'll see is like the front and the back of them so i i could put them under here but they'll kind of be angled up so it's probably better to go on the top side and then have the foot plate cover it i don't know i'll kind of see once i get them made Shape is all done, got the steering wheel mounted. So this just has like nine screws going through it. Then I drilled a couple extra holes into the mounting plate so that we could get two screws through there, plus it's clamped to the bottom. For the pedals, I've got these two kind of mounting blocks that these are screwed into. I only screwed in two of them so far. Um, but we'll do the rest after. And then there's these little like support wings so that it's nice and sturdy. The seat. I have a lot of trouble envisioning things. I can't picture things in my mind well. I had to like stare at it for 20 minutes. And I feel like we had figured this out before, but I just couldn't remember what the solution was. So basically on the underside of here, I mounted two little runners so that it's an inch and a half thick on the underside. That way I can screw into something with longer screws and it's not poking through the underside. Mm -hmm. There's screws that'll go through the underside here into those runners. This little nut right here is just a placeholder. This is basically like what would be on the underside of the chair that these bolts go into. Mm -hmm. So I drilled holes through those runner plates and through here. So this goes all the way through to the ground. Mm -hmm. And there should be just enough room that we can basically get up through here and tighten that to the bottom of the seat. Is that how we had talked about doing it? No, we've talked about just doing away with the runners. The, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. That, that was where we had kind of left it, even though... That would have been way easier. <laughs> yeah, or... Because that's the hard part. It's like, a, it's like a Rochambeau. It's like you can't do A if you've done B, but you can't do... Well, honestly, all you'd have to do is like put the chair on here, get the two back ones. You know, if we had... Uh, you, can, you can get to so it. So just like cut this a little shorter. Yeah, and then and then do the same thing up here. It's very very close. But all 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 you really need is yeah, just like a little. That yeah, might be easier. easier. I actually kind of wanted to shape the seat plate a little bit, kind of like mimic a seat shape, so that it kind of you mm -hmm. know gets narrower at the back and wider at the front, and maybe like curve it here and here. So if I do that, 
it'll probably, I mean, it's going to expose more of it. So if it's already like almost exposed, yeah. if I do that, and any material that's beyond these right. rails is basically doing nothing. Right. So it, before it was up, the nut was up right. here and it couldn't go down because it starts so hitting yeah. that. Okay, and we'll reconvene now. in 45 minutes. Okay, see you then. Okay, slots drilled, seat cut short. Should we attach them back up and see if this worked? Yeah, let's do that. When we do our final mounting, we'll pay closer attention to that. Yeah, yeah, that, that feels better. quite a bit better. Yeah, it's not like as much of a stretch. Okay. Man. We're, we're going to get made fun of by people who build stuff and people who are into sim racing. For people who are going to make fun of us about building stuff, like we know we're idiots, so we make fun of ourselves all the time. They speak and, and I always say, I'm okay, Sean is good at building stuff. <laughs> I always say, I'm bad. Like well, I am slightly less than average when it comes to building stuff. I'm just creative. And so I compensate with that. To be, yeah, to be fair, this type of what you're doing here is like your your the worst. Yeah, your that's your biggest um, um what's that called? My yeah. weakness. Your, my yeah, your, weakness. yes, your biggest weakness is this type word. of stuff. I know. <laughs> Sean's weakness is the English the, language. Then to the people who will make fun of us that are like from the sim racing community, I've never even used a steering wheel before. I have no idea. You know, I'm just yeah. doing it for fun. It's yeah. just something I've always wanted to do, but like. Either I was a little kid and couldn't have one, or now being an adult, don't have the room for one. But when this project came about, I was like, oh, let's, let's try it, it'll be fun. I'm sure this is gonna be a completely stupid project if you were a hardcore sim racer and you saw this. Plus I'm playing Gran Turismo, which like people, if you're into sim racing, be like, oh, it's not a sim game, you gotta get iCar Wait, or whatever. Wait, what? Like, Gran Turismo's not like- Yeah, like people who are super into sim racing would be like, that's a video game. Oh, I thought that was, I would have been like- No, there's like this like, like it's called like iCar or something like that, iCarly. <laughs> if you need me to design a coffee table, I can knock that out for you. Now, now, that, now that we've headed off all the bad comments. Oh, people forward, will probably make fun of us also because- We're talking um, about it. We say like too much. Mm, I, I definitely do. So you can get on us for that. What else? I don't drink. <laughs> That's pretty pathetic. <laughs> Generally speaking, for like doing a hobby that people consider a man's man's hobby, I'm not a man's man. <laughs> Although I do have a wife. And you got two kids. I got two kids, so that means I've at least twice that we know of with her. Twice yep. that we know of. Um, so now I got to make feet. We got to hook everything up. Yeah, I say let's get some laps in. Hot or otherwise. All right, so making the feet is gonna be a process that's really similar to making the spine, only obviously a lot smaller, which was great because it meant that I could route out the entire shape on the X-carve rather than having to make a template on it. So basically less manual labor. Then I could glue, nail, and clamp everything together, and once they were dry, attach them to the spine with a few screws. What is it? We're at 102. Holy. Crud. How big can it go? I push, fill up that whole wall. Yeah, we, should, we could push it back to the door and it would. Where it like maintains like maximum uh, clarity like or whatever. What's, it, what's mm. its absolute max? Yeah. This says 140 inches. Wait, does it say to retain HD or does it say 140? Because it can go. Oh, like, yeah, it can definitely go bigger. Yeah. Um, it says 4K. Oh, oh, oh my Jesus. God. Let's see how big we are. <laughs> like, way over here and then. Okay, right there. 177. Not that much bigger than yeah, it's, it's actually meant you, for. I'd be like, this is like 400 inches. And it looks great. Now yeah. I, I wanted to see what 140 looks like. That's 138 and a half. Basically 140 right here. We got really close. Yeah. If I ever own a house where this isn't big enough, you got I'm, I'm doing problems. well. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. I'll tell you what's a good problem to have is look at what we're breathing in right now. I know. All right, cable management.
Trust. I know. All right, let's just do a quick little time trial. Laguna Seca. What car should I drive? A Miata. Well, now let's see what view we want. Oh, here we go. Oh, right hand drive. So, what? Do I want to be in the cockpit? You gotta be. But isn't it weird to see? But the other, the other view, you're oh. on top of the ceiling. God, this is so weird. Why is it weird? Just because I've never played with a steering wheel oh, before. Oh, I see. I mean, the, the size actually right here feels pretty good. Oh. How much like feedback do you feel? Quite a bit. I think I can just lift here. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm out of control. Lost it. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at it. <laughs> It feels like very different. Like right there, I could feel it like understeering. Mm -hmm. Like you could feel it just like plowing forward. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> that, that weight shift. Yeah, it is it. All right, this lap's gonna be a, gonna a be doozy. a doozy. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> was that a good lap? That was a pretty good lap. Oh man, now I gotta try to beat it. Bo to 930. Can we break the two minute barrier? That's the question. I'm gonna uh, step on the brakes there, buddy. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you think I can do it on the first lap, just going in cold? Yeah, of course. I mean, no way. why not? Yeah. I, you can easily do it. There's nothing, it's really easy. It's easy, dude, if I yeah. can do if it. If Sean did it? Yeah. I was trying to get him to be overconfident. <laughs> I'm just gonna go, not even look. Just not even look. Ooh, I'm walking. Uh oh, I didn't break there. Oh, no. break. Is that like where the apex is? Or? <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good turn. Oh, that was good. You're golden. If you at least don't screw this up. <laughs> Pressure's really on <laughs> now on this last one. <laughs> to uh, eight, eight, nine. Oh! <laughs> with a Damn. nice 18 one hundredths of a second to spare. Oh. No, 18 one thousandths of oh, a so second. Under two minutes, but he, what was Sean, Sean was 202. I was 202, yeah. But that's, all we, that's all you said was just get under two minutes. Let's get under two. Yeah. Now we need to get under one. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we wouldn't want this set up permanently like this, but what did you think of the size? Once I got used to it, it felt pretty normal. You know, when you're playing it and you're focused on it, it's like taking up all of your vision. Yeah, like you have to make a conscious effort to like look, yeah. look at your right. shifts and what gear you're in and stuff. So, so then I might want it even a little bit smaller. So maybe, maybe putting, mounting the projector almost right behind this. We did have it there and then we pushed it a little bit back just because it was pretty small. But yeah, we could move it forward and... Okay, so I'm thinking then what I'll do is I'll, I'll basically build a box. Small box. All right, so as I thought about it more, there were three basic ideas that I came up with for projector placement. The easiest would be mounting it right in front of the steering wheel. The biggest possible downside to this would be shaking since it's physically attached to the spine. Though, I don't know, maybe that would make it feel more realistic. Who knows? A slightly harder idea would be building a little table that kind of hovers over the spine. This would detach the projector, so shaking wouldn't be an issue, but the downside is that it would have to sit further forward to not interfere with our legs and feet, which means that the whole rig would need to be farther from the wall. The biggest idea, and I'm guessing the best, would be to build some sort of cabinet behind the rig that the projector can sit in or on. And the benefit here would be that you could house other components and cables, and really you could go pretty nuts with this. Maybe even make some sort of partition wall or bookcase or whatever fits this space where this thing's gonna live. All that said, I think the best decision is to probably try these projector placements out and then see what makes the best experience and fine tune from there. The other thing I still need to do is create a mount for the stick shift. And again, I've got a few ideas. They all kind of boil down to the same idea though, which is creating some sort of stand that attaches to the spine. That said, this is the one that I like the most. I think it fits aesthetically with the spine the best. And honestly, I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually wanna use the stick shift. To me, it seems like it's fun, but probably kind of worse than the paddle shifters. 
So this idea is also the least attached and therefore can be removed the most easily. So I know something like this rig would not be for everybody and I had a ton of fun building it and I've had a ton of fun so far playing with it. So I think that this challenge is really awesome because it'll give you a chance to take something that you're into and build something to make it better. So here's some more detail about the Rockler Challenge. So as I said, it's called the Rockler Hobby Challenge and here's how to enter. Make something that ties into one of your hobbies, other than woodworking obviously, and document yourself building it and then share final pictures of your project on Instagram using the hashtag Rockler Hobby Challenge. And that's pretty much it. So you'll have until the end of November to enter and we're giving away 500, 250, and 125 dollar Rockler gift cards to the winners. So again, I'm gonna put links in the description so you can see the full rules and details. But honestly, these challenges are always a ton of fun and they really are a great way to get your work in front of a lot of new eyeballs. So best of luck to everybody who participates and I can't wait to see what you come up with and I'll see you in the next video.